Hey guys, welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. We are on month six, which is the final month of our Snippets Block of the Month. This is a Block of the Month that we designed with Studio E Fabrics, and we're ready to put it together. So let's get started. Yay! All right, so I have all of our beautiful blocks laid out here on the table. This is one, two, three, four, and then five through 13 are over here. Um, we are ready to put this baby together. And now what's left is we need to cut all of our ombre fabrics for the borders. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these pressed and ready to cut. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut them so that the ombre runs up and down through the stripes. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are now ready to start cutting. I've got all my fabrics pressed and in order, and because we are cutting borders, we're gonna see the ombre running through the border. We're gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting for the borders, not a whole lot, but we're, I wanna show you how I'm gonna cut these. I'm gonna start with the um, yellow here, and then we will. Um, I will go ahead and get the rest of them cut, and then we are ready to assemble. So as always, like we do for all of the others, all right, so let's go ahead and get our borders cut for this quilt. And that is pretty much all we are cutting for month six. And then we're actually assembling everything with all the blocks we've made. Um, but we do need to do a little bit of fussy cutting of the borders. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first we're cutting the um, sunflower. We need to have eight one and a half inch strips. I've doubled over my fabric. So that means I can cut um, four cuts and get all eight strips. All right, so we have all of those. Now the pattern says to cut from light to dark, and I'm gonna show you why. First, I need to stack these up and I'm gonna get rid of the salvage edges. It's just easier to get them out of the way right at the get-go. So what we're doing is we're cutting two strips per border and we're gonna go from the light of the fabric to the dark of the fabric so that when we sew the two strips together, the light will all be in the center or the dark will be in the center and it'll radiate out to each corner. So consider each of these strips a half a border. And it'll all make more sense when we put it together, but to cut these then what we need to do is we need to open them up flat we're gonna use a tape measure and just measure them and cut them to the length that they are calling for from light to dark or from dark to light. It, it's just, you don't want it in the center. You don't wanna like have the strip folded in half and cut it um, like this. You don't wanna do this. I already did it once, so we're gonna show you my mistake. Where I went ahead, I just, I just kept it folded, whacked it off, and now I have the light in the center and the dark on the edges. What we really want is we want it to go light to dark so that when we butt it together, we get that effect versus doing it and having it repeat over and over in the quilt. Either looks fine. I really don't think there is a wrong way to cut these, but if you want to do it the way the directions say, which is always a pretty good idea, we're going to show you what the heck we're talking about when we say cut from light to dark. All right, we've got all these strips done. Now, if you're really a good quilter, you go press those flat before you cut this. I'm not that good of a quilter. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna live, live dangerously. All right, I have my handy dandy tape measure and I'm going to measure 27 and a half, which is the first to cut. Pretty sure that's the first cut, double check. 27 and a half. I'm gonna go ahead, it's right here. And that looks right. And then I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm gonna cut right where that pin is. And I will have my light to dark strip. Okay, so that is the first ones. And we're gonna cut all the strips this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the next one laid out and cut and you can just, um, I'll speed over this. I just wanted you guys to know what I meant by the light to dark cutting and why we're doing it. And here, let me show you now that we've got to cut what we're going to do when we sew them together. 
And, and this is without reading the pattern, so I need to make sure I'm not misleading you guys. Let's make sure I got this right. Yep. So when you sew these together, you want to make sure that the dark goes to dark. And now you can see this will be in the center and it'll work out to the light. And then when you put the side borders on and the top and bottom borders, the corners will be light and the centers will be dark. So that is why we're fussy cutting these. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these borders cut. And then we are going to be ready to assemble this quilt. All right, so we have all of our pieces cut and just don't forget to cut the four little two and a half inch squares. Um, that is something I would miss when I cut. So we've got all our borders, we've got all our blocks, and now we're ready to put this guy together. So first things first is we're gonna grab our block ones, which are these guys, and you're gonna sew them in a two by two matrix. But I wanna make sure you do what I didn't do on the first one, I had to rip it apart and redo it, is you wanna make sure that there's a red square in that corner and a yellow square here, and then that there's a yellow square and a red square. So you're creating this four patch here in the center, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these sewn together. Um, I will press these seams open because you can see all of the uh, seams that could cause bulk. So I'm gonna press, sew these together, press this seam open, sew these together, press that seam open, and we will have our center together. So I'm gonna go do that, but I'm gonna show you the next step as well. Um, the next step is we're going to sew the block borders. And so what you need to do for those is you sew, and these also rotate through the quilt. So be aware of that. So on the inner left, it is green going vertical. Then we have one of our star points. And then down here, we have the purple going vertical. Um, it's very subtle in the pattern. You may or may not see it. And then on the right side, we have the purple starting at the top going vertical. Then we have a star and then we have the green at the bottom. Now, if you look at this, they are the same. So you could sew them and just know when you go to assemble the quilt, you need to flip one upside down. But that we're going to sew those together and then I'll show you those. And then last but not least, we're going to do the top border, which has got um, a green vertical, a star, a purple vertical, and then one of these guys on each end. So one and two. So we're just going to stack these up to sew. So that is the inner top border. And then the out inner bottom border are these two on the end again, this guy in the center again, and this time it is purple on this side and green on this side. So same thing, it's the same border but flipped around. Um, so if that makes it easier for you or just following the picture, you will see how the blocks lay out. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the center block sewn, the pieced block borders sewn, all of which I will press open. You can choose to press to one side or the other, but again, there's a lot of bulky points here and I want a flat seam. So to do that, I will be pressing them open. And then once I get these sections sewn together, we'll come back and talk about putting the borders together and finishing this guy up. All right, so last night I started sewing the units together. Um, these are the block one squares. They're gonna make up the centerpiece. Um, I've gone ahead and sewn the blocks into rows. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how I would pin this so that when you sew it together, hopefully all your seams will line up and match. Before we do that, and before we get into all these points we have to match, I do wanna say that these do not have to be perfect, okay? We all strive to be perfect and that's wonderful. But just remember, you're also, after you do all this beautiful piece and you are gonna be quilting this, and you are going to probably wash this. And all that stuff causes everything to shrink up and change and distribute differently. And no one will notice if you are off an eighth of an inch or less on one or two of these points. Um, the level of perfection in your project is based on your own level of perfection. But if you need a teacher's permission to not be perfect, 
consider it granted. Um, we get hung up when we're trying to hit those points and this one has a lot of points to match. Um, but I just don't want you to stress about it if you don't hit all the points. I don't stress about it. Not all my quilts are perfect and I don't always hit the points, but when people see them, they do not go looking for the points. And if they do, don't let them near your quilts. Anyway, so let's go back down here and I'm going to show you how we will pin this together. Um, I recommend starting in the center and working your way out. I'm going to put some glasses on so I can see here. So I align this. Now these seams are pressed open. So when I put my pin in, I want to make sure that I am not putting the pin through the open seam. It, it will just cause that seam to want to split. So what I do is I pin on one side. Now they have these double end pins. You can put a pin in both sides. Um, I don't own any of them. People who have them absolutely love them. But I'm just going to very carefully, not very carefully, I'm just going to work my way across and align all of the seams going from the center to the right side. And then I'll flip it over and repeat that from the center to the left side. Now, when I get to these square in a square blocks, which is what this is, we want that point and that point to align. So what I do is I put a pin in on the top one at that point stick the pin at the top of the bottom one at the top of the block underneath and then my pin is sticking straight out and then i hold my pieces together and just rock that pin into place and now i know that is pinned and i'm just going to come back here and pin this guy now if for some reason you have one piece that's a little bit bigger than the other there's a little this one seems a little bit um looser there's a little more extra fabric who knows why there's a million things that happen while you're piecing these um, just put that one on the bottom and the machine will actually gather up the extra fabric so we've got that side pinned we're going to go ahead and pin this side you are going to want to remember um, pinning these square to square blocks for the outer borders because that is how you will pin those as well uh, so this is a lesson for both these blocks the block borders and the outer square and a square so again I am just pinning right to the side of my seam we're out here we're gonna go ahead put the pin in at the point okay so in the green not in the black but right where the black starts and the same thing here in the green right where the black starts and I'm just sort of with my thumb making sure that feel, things feel lined up underneath and then I just rock that pin into place and then I come back to this seam and stick this pin in. A lot of times if you do this seam first, this one doesn't want to line up, but if you do this first and that, that one will always line up. I, ugh, who knows? I don't know why. All right, so there we go. So we've got this all pinned. I'm going to go ahead and sew this out and hopefully all of my seams will line up enough for muster. And then we are going to move on to piecing our borders. So let me get this sewn and I'll be right back. All right, so there we go. There is my center seam. I am very happy with it. I am sure that looks lovely to you. Now what I'm going to do is something I don't normally do. And I'm gonna show you where my points didn't quite match up. Just to show you that overall, this looks beautiful. It looks correct, it looks aligned. But if you go in here, right there it's a little bit off and actually on the same side right there is a little bit off um, and it's kind of funny because it's like we pinned everything and it all looks nice if you look really carefully those two points are off am I gonna rip this apart and fix it no because no one's gonna see it unless I hold it up to a camera and show you and that's the point of that lesson is to show you that you know even the teachers are not perfect and that sometimes your points don't match but it really depending on what it is does not matter so what I would recommend is once you sew your blocks together hang it on a design wall hang it throw it on the well not throw it on the floor put it on the floor step away from it if you cannot find the point that's bothering you when you look up close then you don't need to worry about it if you can see it from a distance then yes you probably have to fix the the the, the alignment issue so all of that being said 
do it to the level of your perfection and you can move on and not rip and redo it, rip and redo it. Because I know I see students struggle over that because they think it has to be perfect and it really, really does not have to be perfect, but close to perfect we will definitely take. All right, so we've got our centers done. Now we're ready in the pattern to do our borders. And I've gone ahead, and let me get back to where we were in the pattern because I was working on this last night, thus the shirt change. Um, I went ahead and did my side border, and or block borders. So these are the two sides. Again, pay attention to the orientation of these two blocks because it does make a difference in the overall layout. Now, that is if you're trying to match the picture. If you rotate it and you don't care, I don't care, just leave it. So there are the side ones. Again, pin your points when you're doing this. I found it much easier to sew with this block, this one on top so that I could try to hit all of my uh, fence post points here. This side is just plain fabric, so if this was on top, I could see that I was aligned properly to get those points to come out. So I did uh, purposely sew that one on top so I could keep an eye on it. Same thing for the top and bottom borders, which are much longer. Oops, it's folded, that's what's going on. Look at the array of color on that camera. So there's the top and bottom borders. Again, these are uh, rotated in different orientations so don't make them the same and now we have all our block borders done and these i did press all of these out uh, out i did press all of these open and i did go back when we did block four i said i just pressed that up and down i didn't press that seam open i did go back and press those seams open because i felt like it was being really wonky and wavy and i didn't like that so i did press those open before i put these together um, so there are those so we have all our blocks sewn into borders and we have our center done now we're working on our ombre borders and we go through each one in the instruction and to show you how to sew it so that you know um, the dark is in the middle, the lights are on the end. I think the, the black ones are dark in the middle, light on the ends. The white ones are light in the middle, dark on the ends. The yellow are dark in the middle. Let's see, there's one more over here. And that one we'll do when we get to that one. So the first borders we do, let's put these are the little black squares. First borders are dark, then we're going to do white. And then we're going to do yellow. So let's just put these in order. So what the, my directions are saying is that you have, here's your strip. You have the light end, which on the dark is actually the uh, least populated end versus the more populated confetti end. Um, but light, dark. So what we're saying is you're going to go over to the sewing machine and you are going to sew these dark end to dark end and that will create our border so it's dark in the center so it's not chaotic so there is a plan to it so i'm going to go ahead so these dark end to dark end and you are going to just use a straight seam we are not going to sew, sew these on the diagonal which is a popular way to sew them so what i'm doing right now is i'm just going to flip these over and drop a pin in so that when i get to the sewing machine <laughs> i remember which side to sew it on and the same for these guys and uh, let's make sure, so it is the two 23 inch ones, the two 24 inch ones. Okay, there are those. So these are gonna go around our center block on the sides and these are gonna go top and bottom. And what will happen is we'll go dark to light, light to dark, dark to light, light to dark. So we're gonna set these aside. These are already done, we don't have to piece them. So those are ready. Then we need to take these guys, these are the white, and we are going to make um, two three and a half, we need to take two three and a half by twenty four and a half, and this time we are going to piece them light end to light end so that the confetti is in the corner. So we're going to just go ahead again and just pin these. So I think you're getting the gist of this. I'm going to go ahead um, the gold ones are also done dark to dark. 
and so I'm going to just get this one pinned because I was talking about it. And I'm going to jump ahead in our pattern and I'm going to show you how to do the purple ones while we're talking borders. It just makes more sense in the video. So these are light to light. These are going to be dark to dark. I will pin those off camera. Then we've got all our purple. So this is, we're jumping over to step, where are we here? 16 and 17. So for each of the side borders, you are going to, and top and bottom borders, you are going to use four of these for one border. So one, two, three, four. And the reason we're doing this is to make the lights and darks wave the way we want them to. So you start with the dark on one corner and we're just following figure 17. Then you have light and you butt light to light. You're gonna take there. And then you're going to do the same thing over here, light to light. So you have that. See here. And then once those are sewn, we will flip this out and flip this out and we will sew dark to dark. So we'll go dark, light, dark, light, dark. It just gives some um, method to the pattern. Now, you're going to go, ooh, the side borders use four of these and the top and bottom borders use four of these, which means they're exactly the same length. That is where these little guys come in. And these guys are going to get the sewn onto the ends of the top and bottom border when we go to assemble the quilt. The image for this is in the quilt layout versus at the end of these Oh no, I'm sorry, I take that back. At the bottom, at figure 18, once you sew those together, you're going to sew these on and it talks about it in the pattern. So the side borders are four of these, the top and bottom are four of these plus two of these, one on each end. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my borders sewn and then we're ready to put this puppy together. All right, so now that we have all of the um, ombre borders sewn together, I've also gone ahead and sewed all of my squares from month five together following the, remember if I, if you remember, I said to mark your blocks with the number, the block number, and you can see in the illustration why, because it's, it goes, it follows the number of the block, so not the letter of the color. So you wanted to mark those in month five, which hopefully you watched the video and saw my note to do that. And then you're going to just put those in order. They can be random too. I'm trying to follow a picture to make my quilt look like the pattern, but you could just randomly pick them and rearrange them in whatever, whatever color order you like. Just make sure you put the right number of blocks in each border. So we've got all of those sewn and again I pressed these open and I did use the pin to align them in the center and then pinned each side just like we did on the other one. So these are all ready to go. So we've got all our borders sewn. Now we can finally build our quilt. All right, and we're just gonna come on over to the last page of the pattern. There is an illustration here and it walks you through all of the steps. Um, but the first thing we need to do is we need to take our center block and I like to put my side borders on first. So this is the top. And these are the sides. So this one is where we're going to use the pieces we did not have to piece. And the short ones go on the side and the long ones go on the top and bottom. So what I am going to do is I'm going to pick a corner. And this side is going to have dark in the upper left. And this side will have light. And again, this is just however picky you want to be about this. Uh, you could fold this border in half and crease it so you know that that is the center of the border. Um, but it's tiny enough I can just pin it here. I highly recommend pinning borders uh, because as you're running it through the sewing machine, the feed dogs on your uh, most sewing machines, even the ones with dual feed seem to do it, I'm, though that could just be my imagination. Um, they pull the bottom fabric a little bit faster than the top. So if you do not pin your borders, you could actually uh, gather extra fabric in there and you have a weighty wonky border. So pinning borders is highly recommended. 
All right, so let's do a little bit of planning here. This is dark, this is light. That means the bottom strip will be light to dark. Oops, I'll put them on camera. So this is the dark corner, light. When I put the bottom on, it'll be light on this end and dark on this end, which means when I put the side border on, if I want to keep the pattern going, I need to put dark and then light. So it's opposite. So that's dark and this is light, this is dark and this is light. That will keep the pattern running around the center. So we're going to go ahead and pin this guy in place and I'm going to get this border sewn on and then we'll be back to do the block borders. All right, so here we go. We have our borders. Opposite corners are the um, dark side and the other two corners are the light side. So the pattern runs around the block. Now we're going to go ahead and order order. We're going to add our block borders. I just want to share a tip that it is much easier to sew with your borders on the bottom and the piece blocks on top so that you can hit these points as you're sewing along and you know that you're not cutting off any of your uh, tips on your blocks or on the, the next round we have the rail fences with the little tiny tips. Um, so I did sew with this on top and the border on the bottom. And then I did press out towards the borders. You'll do that through the whole project. Just press out towards the borders. Now we're ready to sew our side borders on, the side block borders. And we want to make sure we have the orientation of the blocks correct. So on the left side, the green bars go vertical at the top. And on the right side, the purple bars go vertical at the top. So those go on that way. And then on top and bottom, the top is the green bars go vertical on the left and the purple on the right. So it matches the side borders. And then on the bottom, it'll be the opposite. It'll be the um, green bars will be on the right and the purple will be on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these on. Then we've got three pieced or three colored borders. So we're going to get our blocks on. And then we have a black border, a white border, and a gold border. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep pinning and sewing my borders on. Um, and then I'm going to show you this at the end. Because really from this point forward, it is just continue to add your borders till you build the quilt. Um, I will tell you that always press towards the borders uh, throughout the whole project, including on this top. Let me grab it here. Including on here. When you go to press these black squares, we all want to go like this, but actually if you just press it towards the border and not towards the square, when you go to put this on, it'll nest really nice. So always press towards the borders. That's all you really need to remember. I'm going to go ahead and get this quilt top finished and I'll be back at the end. All right, so we've got our block borders sewn on and the three solid colored board, well, not solid colored, but the three solid fabric borders, they're not pieced. I just wanted to give a real quick tip here. When you're doing these, part of the reason we did a straight seam is that every border is seamed in the middle. So you wanna make sure that you nest, you press this one this way, this one this way, this one this way, and that'll give you a nice flat seam right here and you don't have bulk. The other tip is when you put this first black border on, it is sewn to the correct size for your center. And based on your center, it may be a little long or a little short, just a little. I would ease the border onto the quilt. If it's less than like a quarter of an inch, it can certainly take that. But what that'll do is make the rest of the borders just pop on beautifully. Um, if it's for whatever reason too long or too short, you may have to adjust all your borders going out and then you will have an issue with the squares. So you really want to get this to match this before doing this. So now that I've got all that on, I just wanted to share those tips with you. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, I have my last borders on. All right, here it is all put together. I have my last two borders on here. Let me tuck those under so you can actually see it. Uh, well, the big tip on that one when you're adding these two borders is to make sure to put this pieced border 
on top when you're sewing so that you can catch those points and make sure they look really pretty on the end quilt. With that being said, we're all done with this guy. I hope you have enjoyed this six month block of the month with us. We've enjoyed sewing along with you. I'd love to see your comments below on your finished quilt, hopefully, or any questions you have, you can certainly reach me there. Um, my cutting table isn't big enough to show you the whole quilt all finished. So I am going to put in a still here. This is a photograph taken um, by Studio E of one of the quilts we made. We made a couple of these and I just want you to see what it looks like all sewn and quilted and ready to be loved. So with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. Make sure to hop over to our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and sign up for all our social media and our email newsletters. That's where you'll be notified when we do these Block of the Month series or any kind of sew along or any of our sales uh, or news or where we're going to be teaching. All of that goes out in the newsletter, so if you want to follow us there. If you just want to keep following us here over here on YouTube, just make sure to like and subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up to let me know you enjoyed the video, and I want to thank you for watching. So until next time, happy sewing.